Hey ladies. Okay, so this is what we're making. It is the cutest little Georgia keychain. And the patterned vinyl here is patterned adhesive vinyl, is a sparkleberry pattern. And then I used um, 651 Orcal for the white and a hot pink 651 Orcal for the um, hot pink. Uh, a more adhesive vinyl would probably be good. You could even do a laminate on top of this if you wanted to, just to protect it a little more, because it is going to get a lot of wear and tear with it being a keychain. The acrylic shape, this is the back side of it. The acrylic shape is a two inch shape, um, acrylic shape from Craft Chameleon. And this is the size that only has one hole in it. And then the hardware that goes on there, I also got from Craft Chameleon. I believe the shapes come in packs of five and the hardware comes in packs of 25. So I will put a link to this in the comments for everything that I use and that way you can go there and purchase it if you want to. But as always, let me know if you have questions, um, if there's something else you want to see a video on how to do, kind of the detailed, and hey, this is just me. It ain't anything professional. It is just how I do things. But I will give you some cool tips and tricks for how to apply vinyl and how to put them on a shape with no overhangs and get it on there perfectly straight. So if you have questions, always feel free to ask me in the comments below or this video if you see the video on YouTube or if you see the video on Crafting Queen's uh, Facebook page. So feel free to join our page, follow us, and let me know what you think. Thanks guys, have a great weekend. Okay, so on my screen, I have a file that I have opened. And when I purchased the keychain, um, the acrylic keychain, Craft Chameleon emailed me the shape that is perfect. So I don't need to resize it or anything. When I cut this, it should be perfectly sized to fit on the acrylic shape. And they do this with probably, I believe, everything that they sell. So anything that you buy that you can or would adhere um, adhesive vinyl to, they're gonna send you a cut file for it. And if they don't, you can always request that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my initial on there. And first, I do wanna change the color of this. I think it kinda gives you a better visual. So anytime I work with anything, I always colorize what I'm working with to make it more like what I want my end result to be so that I can make changes on the screen instead of after I've applied my vinyl. So I'm gonna go up here. This is one place you can change it. So up here in the top left corner, pull up the color palette. I'm just gonna change this to a lime green color. Now I'm gonna choose the text tool on the left hand bar, I'm going to click on my workspace and I'm going to do a capital letter P for my initial. I'm going to select it and here is another place you can colorize is over on this side. So I'm going to choose the color palette and the fill tool from uh, the fill panel from the right hand bar and I'm going to choose pink. Now I do want to change my font. I'm not really crazy about that font. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing because we're going to resize it anyway. So the text style panel is on the right hand bar as well. I'm going to click on that. That's going to bring up everything that I need to change my font. So I'm just going to scroll down through here and it does show you kind of what your font looks like. Your recently used is up here um, and then I'm going down here to where all the fonts are and if you click right click excuse me left click on one and then hit your down arrow it will take you through them so you can see what they're gonna look like to get a preview I have way too many of them to be doing this so I'm gonna scroll down to a font that I know I like I believe it's this one yes that's the font I want. 
So I am going to make that, and it is smaller, and you'll see that some are bigger, some are smaller. So I don't resize anything until after I have chosen my font and made any changes to it that I want to make. I'm going to select this again because now on the keychain, as you saw earlier, I do have a border behind the letter. So in order to do that, over on the right hand bar, I'm going to choose the offset panel and open that. I'm going to hit offset and it defaults to a 0.125 inches. You can either select this and type in the distance you want. You can slide the bar to increase it or decrease it or you can use the up and down arrows. And I'm going to take this down to 0 0.80, 0 0.080. And if you're doing an offset on an object that has square corners or 90 degree corners, you can also choose the corner type you want, whether it's rounded. And it will default, It'll if I were offsetting around a rectangle, it would default so that it would automatically just square and 90 degree my corners. Hit apply. Now without clicking on anything else, the border that is showing here, the selection box that is showing here, is still on my offset background that I put in. So I'm going to go up to the left hand um, palette and I'm going to choose that and I am going to choose white because once I move it onto the green background it's going to show up better. I'm going to change the line color on it just to make it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to choose black. I didn't choose white to match the background color because it'll get lost on this workspace in just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to draw a selection box around my offset and my initial P, the pink P. And I'm going to drag those up. I'm going to start resizing this. So grab the bottom corner. If you don't grab a corner and you just grab a side, that's going to squish it instead of proportionately resizing it. So if you accidentally grab one of those, you can always go up here and hit the back arrow, which is undo. Control Z will also do the same thing. And same thing happens if you grab one here on the bottom or on the top. You're just going to mess with it and it's going to resize it, but not proportionally. So I'm going to undo that to take it back to what we had. So I do want to choose one here. Any of these on the corner are going to proportionately resize your letter. And I do want to keep it a little bit large. And I think that's what I want. Okay, that right there. And you can use your arrows, your arrow keys to move it up and down. And I do like the way that looks. Now it is a little small. So what I'm going to do is up here at the top, I'm going to zoom in. And you can zoom in a couple of times to just kind of be able to work with it better. What this is also going to allow us to do is to manipulate our shapes and click on things like if I need to click on my offset, it's going to make it a whole lot easier to do that if I have it zoomed in and make it larger. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to choose the drawing tools. I'm going to choose a rectangle. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to draw a rectangle around my shape and I'm going to leave some space at the top. And I'm probably going to want just a little bit more space at the top. Okay, I'm going to select all of this and move it down so it's within the workspace. It'll make it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. So I have the shape around there and that's my weeding box. And I'm going to choose the drawing tool again. And I'm going to come up here in the corner and I'm going to draw a small rectangle. Without clicking off of it, I'm going to right click and choose duplicate. 
Duplicate is going to put an identical shape just to the right of the one you already have, but it will be spaced um, on the same line. And I'm gonna move that over using my right arrow and just get it close to the edge. Okay, now if you are set up so that whenever you click and you draw a shape and you let off of it and it goes back to being crosshairs and wants to draw another shape, that is something you can change in your settings. So you would just go up and choose Edit Preferences and there is an option in there that will let it go to a selection arrow instead of going back to crosshairs every time you draw something. Okay, so this is looking like what I want. So I'm going to go with this. What we want to do next, I'm going to select all of this and you can do Control A as well if you have a, um, a laptop that is not a Mac. And I'm going to right click and choose copy and then I'm going to right click and choose paste. Paste is going to paste exactly everything that I copied. I'm going to bring it over here, move it out of the way, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose paste again. And I want that one down just a little further. So what we're going to do with this is we want, the reason we did, we waited until we drew our box around there so that we would have the exact same box with these little rectangles, which we're going to call registration marks, and we're going to use those to line up our shape after we cut our vinyl. So we want those in the exact same place. So that's why we just copied this instead of drawing a new rectangle and doing new shapes on each one. We need them to be exact and to match. And you'll see why once we start putting it all together. So on this one, we're going to come back here and I'm going to click on the initial P, hit delete, click on my offset and hit delete. So I'm left with just the Georgia shape. On this one, I'm going to click the initial P and hit delete and I'm going to click on the state shape and hit delete. I will come to my third one and I'm going to click on the Georgia shape and hit delete and then to click on the offset can be a little difficult. You can zoom in further to make sure that you can click on it and hit delete or the other thing you can do is if it's just tiny and you can't really maneuver it well, move your selection arrow over very slowly and the minute that it turns to a pointer hand right there, I want to click and hit delete. And that's going to take away that offset. So I'm going to zoom back out because I don't need to fine tune these anymore. And the way I'm going to place my vinyl on my cutting mat is I'm going to put one piece of vinyl in each corner of my cutting mat. So I'm going to bring this piece down. I'm going to take this piece up. And I don't go all the way into the corner. I just kind of leave. That way if my mat is in there and it's not all the way up against the line, um, it's still okay. Now to send these, I'm going to hit send. And I'm using a Cameo. I always check to make sure that I have cut lines around everything. There are not cut lines around the state shape, so I do want to choose cut on that. And that's all I did was I clicked on it and I choose, um, chose cut. So that's going to make sure that it cuts all of those shapes out. But the most important thing is to first do a weeding box. So I want to go back here. I'm going to choose the text tool. I'm going to click down here at the bottom. Actually, I'm going to click up here because my vinyl cut settings are pretty good and you can do two of these. So I'm going to put a capital B up here 
because I want it to cut it out of the printed vinyl I'm using because it's a little bit different thickness than my regular adhesive vinyl that I'm using. I'm going to copy and paste that B and I'm going to bring it down here. So I want it to cut a capital B out of my vinyl, my adhesive vinyl, and my printed adhesive vinyl. I'm going to go to send. I'm going to draw a selection box around and make sure you get everything that's in these boxes, the top registration marks, and your shapes in the middle. And I'm going to choose no cut because we want to do our test cut first. And I'm going to do the same thing down here to this box. Make sure you don't select your, your capital B that is your test cut B. And then choose no cut because you want the B's to still be red. I will choose Vinyl, um, I do have, it is not printable vinyl, it is printed vinyl, which is different, but the, the settings are going to be just about the same. So I'm going to choose Vinyl Glossy, and it says I need a blade depth of 1, speed of 5, and force of 10. I do usually turn that down to about an 8. I'm going to leave it at 10 since we're doing a test cut and just make sure it works correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send that to my machine. I'll hit send here at the bottom. I'm not connected to my machine right now. So I'm going to move over to the machine. I'm going to hit send and then I'll be right back to show you how to make the cut if my test cut is good. Okay, so my test cut was fine. So now I'm going to select the, that B and tell it no cut. I'm going to select that B and tell it no cut. Then I will come back over here and I will draw a selection box around both of my top shapes, making sure I get the small rectangles and the larger weeding box and choose cut. Same thing with this one down here. Make sure I choose everything and choose cut. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to send that to my machine and cut it. And then when it's time to weed it, I'll do a live there, or not a live, but I'll have a recorded video to show you how I weed it and how I assemble it and put it all together. And a really great tip for applying it to the acrylic and getting it on there straight. Okay, so now you can see um, how I have the vinyl on my cutting mat, and this is the same way I have it on my work surface in studio. So I do have the printed vinyl, printed adhesive vinyl on the top left corner, my white for my offset in the top right corner, and then the hot pink in the bottom left corner. So I'm going to put it in the machine, I'm going to cut it, and when it's time to weed it, we'll come back and I can show you exactly what I'm doing. So my shapes are all cut out, and just to show you, you do want to make sure that you do not weed out, I did go ahead and weed these, that you leave those rectangles at the top. If for any reason you accidentally pull those up, um, you're probably going to need to cut again unless you can see exactly where they went. Sometimes you'll see an imprint of where the blade went around and cut, and you can sometimes use tweezers and put it back in the exact spot. But if you don't get those back exactly where they go, when you go to line things up, it's not going to line up perfectly. And now I'm going to take my shape, and these come with a protective covering on both sides. You can use a weeding tool to pull up that protective covering. Um, if you do, be very careful because it can scratch the acrylic. You just want to get it started and then it'll pull up easily. It's just the getting started part that's kind of hard with these. So I'm going to pull that off. This, I'm not too awful worried about scratching it just because I am going to put vinyl over the top of it. And if you wanted to do a reverse image and put vinyl on the back of these as well, you could do that. For time's sake, we're only going to do the front side. 
And like I said, these are a little bit difficult to get this off, but once you get it started, it's pretty simple. Okay. So it is clear, and these do, um, they etch well, so you can actually etch them, and, or you can put vinyl on them, either way. We're gonna put vinyl on them. This one has, this is the two inch size with one hole. So since we're gonna make a keychain out of it, we only wanted one hole. They do have some that have a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom. So you could use it like a pendant and then have your chain attached at the top to wear around your neck. And then a hole at the bottom where you could attach some type of embellishment like a tassel. Because I'm gonna put that to the side. We don't need that quite yet. So when you're layering, different um, layers of vinyl, adhesive vinyl, what you want to do is you want to start with your top layer because that's going to be on the very top. So we're going to place it onto the transfer tape kind of in reverse order. With this, it's not going to matter if we get it on here if it's skewed a little bit because we're not going to try and place it. We're going to, um, we're going to do something a little different to get it on here to get it on your acrylic straight. So I'm going to press that down, use your squeegee to make sure you've got really good contact between your transfer paper and your adhesive vinyl, and do this on your mat. I use my mat for everything. It's very helpful because it will hold it flat, especially while you're placing um, other layers. It is going to hold it flat. Let me move this camera back just a little bit. So I don't knock it over. Okay, now I'm going to peel this off of the backer. If you have any trouble getting it off, um, you can turn it down flat on your mat, face down, and peel the backer away from the transfer paper instead of the other way around. My second layer is my, um, my offset that's going to be the border around my letter. And the way you want to do this, I'm kind of doing this upside down so you guys, or to the side so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take the piece of carrier sheet that came off of the back that I just peeled off of the back of my initial and I'm going to lay that over the top of this to protect in case my vinyl does accidentally touch down. I don't want it to touch down anywhere other than on these two rectangles that are at the top. And you're gonna see this better once we get to this piece because it's color the white is a little difficult to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up, and if you have a light box or something that you can put underneath where you can see the shapes coming through, that's a whole lot easier than to try and do this. Um, this is the only time that transfer paper is going to be better for you because you will be able to see a little better. I'll try and get this to fold back to where I can see exactly what I'm doing here. Okay, so and you're going to line up those rectangles. Okay, so once I have those lined up, I'm going to hold that down so I don't accidentally pull it up. I'm going to remove this carrier sheet and then while still holding this up kind of at a almost 90 degree angle, I'm going to use my squeegee to start working down to press that over the top of that offset to keep from getting air bubbles. Okay, so I've got good contact on that. I'm going to peel all of this up. Of course, when you want something to stick to your mat, it doesn't stick that well. And then when you need to get something off of it. So I'm just going to peel the backing away. I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to lay it down right here, and this will come into focus in just a second. Gonna put that carrier sheet on top to protect it so that only my rectangles are going to 
get touched with this. And I'm going to line up the rectangles. So I'm going to fold this down again because I can see I'm exposed just a little bit, just enough to line it up. Okay. Press down and then remove that carrier sheet. Use the squeegee. And work it all the way down. Okay. okay so I've got that on there good. Now I want to take all of this off of the carrier sheet. So I'm going to pull it off. I don't need those registration rectangles anymore, so I'm going to remove those. And the trick to getting adhesive vinyl on a piece of acrylic easily, I'm going to lay something else here so it'll help it to focus better. Okay, so the easy way to get um, something onto a piece, and I did not mark this first. I do need to mark this really quick so that I can punch a hole in it for the keychain. So what I'm going to do in order to mark it to, to know exactly where the hole needs to go for my keychain, I'm going to, with it, I put it back on a carrier sheet. I'm going to lay my acrylic shape on top. And I'm going to grab an ink pen, a marker actually works really well for this. So I've got it lined up and I'm going to stick that marker through that hole of the acrylic and I'm just going to mark a spot where I can see, you can see right there, that's where I marked the dot where I need to punch a hole for the keychain hardware to go through. So I'll pull this up. I'm going to fold all that out of the way. And then using a hole punch, I'm going to punch the hole there. And I found with these, I don't have the exact right size, but um, you can get you can punch multiple holes close to each other to get a big enough hole that your hardware will fit through. Okay, so that is correct now. Got that hole punched there. And I'm going to peel this away from the carrier sheet again. But So the easiest way to apply acrylic to your shape or to your adhesive vinyl is to do it the opposite way of what you would think. So instead of laying my acrylic down, I'm going to lay my vinyl down. And then I'm going to place the acrylic on that cut vinyl, just kind of one edge at a time, and kind of move it around until I get it perfect where it should be, and then press down. Once I do that, I do want to use that squeegee again just to make sure it is really adhered to that surface well. And then I will peel away that transfer paper. See, that worked perfect. Got it perfectly aligned on there. It's not overlapping on any of the edges of the acrylic. And it's just a really good, easy way to get it lined up. The only thing is this method, you do you can get air bubbles if you're not careful. Um, with this, you can easily just take a pin and poke a little hole and then work that air bubble out. But just make sure it's just a tiny little hole if you're going to do it that way. Okay, and now I'm going to put my hardware on and then it'll be good to go. Let me know if you have any questions.